There are people in the Bible who said God did, but God did not. But it is written. So if you read Genesis to Malachi, you have the opinion that God gave the law, for example. But when you read the epistles, you discover that the law was given by Moses. There was a reason for it. You know, the law of Moses is not the perfect will of God. The law of Moses was given in response to the state of man's heart. Those who read Deuteronomy 15, where the Bible says, A man should not wear what belongs to a woman. By the time you read it properly, you know he's not saying that a woman should not wear trousers. When he says a woman should not wear what belongs to a man, he is not saying a woman should not wear trouser. Because in that chapter, there is no trouser. Trouser is in your mind. You are reading your mind into the Bible. He didn't say a woman should not wear trouser. He said a woman should not wear what belongs to a man and a man should not wear what belongs to a woman but he did not specify which one is a woman and which one belongs to a man. Which means it is subject to culture. For example, back in those days, men wear gown. So if you want to stay with that, let's start wearing gowns. Even Jesus wore gowns. Because that was the culture of Jewish dressing. So that's why there's no specifics. Moreover, you need to find out under what dispensation where they ask for men not to wear what belong to women and for women not to wear what belong to men. It was when the children of Israel were going to the promised land. And where they were going to, there were homosexuals in the land. Remember, the promised land was inhabited by Jebusites. Amorites, Anakims, giants. There was homosexuality in Canaan. So Moses said, that land where you're going, when you go there, don't wear what belongs to a man and man don't wear what belongs to a woman so you can be distinguished from the homosexuals. It was not a code of dressing for everybody. It is for a specific people that were going to a specific culture. Okay, if you want to stay with that scripture that says a man should not wear what belongs to a woman, under that same chapter, he says you shall not build a house with balcony. So once you build a house with balcony, you are a hypocrite. You stop women from wearing their clothes freely, but you have a house with balcony. And in that same chapter, he says you shall not wear a cloth with two different materials. You cannot wear jeans and t shirt It's in that chapter. And if you break one, so in fact, at a point in the Bible, they were not supposed to eat four-footed beasts or meat strangulated. Then one day God said, what I have clean, you shall not call on clean. Eat goat, eat cow, eat chameleon, eat frog. No, 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 don't be moving like that. Now. <laughs> what God has clean? Thou shalt not call on clean either by your mouth or by your <laughs> glory to God. He said, Peter, stand up, kill and eat. Peter said, No way. He said, What I have clean, you shall not call on clean. Even if you want to eat mosquito, you're free. Yeah. There was a dispensation where people lived under the law, but no more today. We must know when God spoke. We must know when God did not speak. When men spoke by their own interpretation and understanding of God. And when men spoke out of unbelief. In fact, in the Bible, liars spoke. In the Bible, thieves spoke. In the Bible, Satan spoke. It's not only God that spoke in the Bible. Even Satan spoke. Thieves spoke. Liars spoke. All, and it's all documented it is all written in the same book. That's why the book must be rightly divided. You must study the Bible. You cannot afford to be lazy. You cannot afford to be lazy. Interestingly, what we are studying this time around is so key because you must know what I am teaching you here. You need to know God. 
Just like we took time to establish, rain doesn't come from God. Rain is as a result of the fall of man. There was no rain from Genesis 1 and 2. There are two chapters in the Bible that are perfect. Genesis 1 and 2. From Genesis chapter 3, man has fallen. And from chapter 3 forward, it's a different modus operandi. Now, if you study carefully, you find out that the first time rain fell was Gen Genesis chapter 7 and 8, the flood of Noah. And that rain was judgment. So rainfall is not a blessing from God. Rainfall is judgment for man's sin. What was God's plan in the beginning? There was water above the firmaments, water under the ground. Water under the ground was to just keep watering the ground. And there was plant, all the seed was in the ground. Man didn't have to go to farm. Farm was natural. Fruits grew out of the ground. Food grew out of the ground. And God told man to eat all the herbs of the field. Man was not supposed to eat meat. Meat was not part of man's diet. It was the herbs of the field. God said to Adam, you can eat of every tree. Eat of all the herbs. But don't eat that one. The day you eat it, you shall surely die. And if you observe, the Bible tells us that things were growing from the ground of their own accord. The leaves and the fruits and the vegetables never grew old and never died. They were evergreen. So you just keep eating. And what God created was supposed to be forever. So in the sky, there was water to condition the atmosphere so that the whole planet is cool. So that man is comfortable to live long. Water was gathered in one area. Land was gathered in one area. And the whole world was one. There were no continents. No Africa, no Europe, no Canada, no America, no Asia. It was one world. People living together. And the Bible said they were moving together. The whole world, all human beings were moving together because we all came from one tribe, one tongue, one blood. All of us had one language. It was the fall of man. The sin of man. The fall of man caused a global change. The heavens collapsed. Water that was supposed to be in the sky, cooling the atmosphere, started falling down. We started having floods. We started having earthquakes. It was not so from the beginning. We took time to also look at where do babies come from. And we established that babies don't come from heaven. Babies don't come from God. There's a process that God put on the earth. There are only two people that came from God. Adam and Jesus. And both of them were perfect. None of them came without leg. None of them came blind. None of them came limping. Adam was perfect jesus was perfect it gives you an idea of god's nature everything god created was perfect in genesis chapter 1 the bible says and god saw that all he has made was very good have you ever imagined how the lion and the lamb and chicken were together in the ark of noah and the lion didn't eat the chicken because animals were not dangerous animals were man's friends it was after the fall of man that mosquitoes started releasing malaria Malaria came from the sin of man. Lions became dangerous. You know, snakes started eating men. That is why it was not strange for a snake to be talking to Eve. Moses wasn't shocked when he saw it in the vision because that was what was obtainable. But after the fall of man, snakes became dangerous. The whole of creation changed. The world changed. Human body changed. Men that used to live for 1,000 years started living 500, 300, 200. Now today, babies die immediately they are born. You live for 40 years, congratulations. 50 years, golden age. Come on, 50. Sin. Sin has tampered with nature. It has tampered with creation. It has tampered with all that God created. So let no man say, when I'm tempted... I'm tempted of God. You must see things from the Christological perspective of the Bible. Evil cannot come from God. People say, you know, evil is a blessing in disguise. And many say, well, you know what the devil meant for evil, God has turned it for good. God used it for your good. You know. 
Turn your mess into a message. Let your mess become your mission. Uh -uh. Your mess become your mission. Your mess become your message. Is that the gospel? The gospel of mess. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of the gospel of mess. For it is the convertible power of God from evil to good. Turn your pain into power. Your mess into message. Your test into testimony. You have read the book. Your mess is not the message. The message is the message of Christ. Not your mess. Clean your mess. I receive God's, <laughs> receive God's grace and mercy. Praise God. I say praise God. And they say, well, conclusively, all things work together. After all, there can be no palace without pit. No palace without pit. And no palace without prison. So if you're in the pit, get ready for the palace. In pit, you better come out. <laughs> hey, if you're in prison, get ready for the palace. Sometimes you've got to go through the pit. From the pit to prison. From prison to the palace. Right now, you may just have left the prison. Clean up like Joseph. You will soon be in the palace. Palace? Okay. How many Josephs? In the whole Bible, how many Josephs? Only one. And even the story of Joseph was a communication in a metaphorical sense of the story of Jesus. See? Joseph hated by his brothers. Jesus came to his own and his own received him not. Joseph sold to prison. Jesus was abandoned by his father. He gave him up to die for us all. See that? In prison, he interpreted dreams. Jesus in hell paid for our salvation. Okay? Then Joseph came out of prison to palace and brought his brothers to be with him at the palace. Jesus rose from the dead and he has brought many sons unto glory. See that? So, when you read such stories in the Bible, you have to ask yourself, what does it mean? 